What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be going over the SAT math section and walking through it, showing all the tips and tricks that you all need to know to make sure you get a perfect score on your next math SAT. So let's get right into it. All right guys, starting off with number one, which of the following is the equation of line L in the XY plane above? All right, so we have line L. We see that it's a positive slope, right? Because it's increasing. So the slope has to be positive. Um, y equals one is a horizontal line at one x equals one is a vertical line at one so we know it's not a or b y equals x this is a one slope right here right so this means that this is correct in terms of the slope right but we see that the y intercept is one correct so this is technically the y intercept for this line is zero since the y intercept is one we pick d and a positive slope so both you know things check out number two what is the length of minor arc AC? All right, and this guy is like live, right? So I've never done this before. Center O has a circumference of 36. So circumference equals two pi R, and then arc is R theta, right? Um, okay. <coughs> so circumference is 836. So Maybe we can just divide by four because it looks like it's separated equally, right? So 36 divided by four, like so this is nine. This is nine, and this is nine, and this is nine, and this is nine. This is what it looks like based upon inspection. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going with nine, guys. If I'm wrong at all, uh, just correct me in the comment section below. But this is how I would generally approach this exam, right? I just want to be I'm completely transparent with you guys. What are the solutions of the quadratic equation? Okay, so uh, okay, a quick way to just eliminate choices is do negative b over a. Negative b over a gives you the sum of the solutions. So that's eight over four, which is two. So we gotta make sure these choices add up to two. So negative one, negative three equals negative four. So that's wrong. But this equals two. This equals negative two. This equals four. So right here, the sums of these three are not two. So only B works. Um, as a quick way of doing this, uh, I got a little hack. Uh, another thing you could do is, let's say if, if I were to divide by four, x squared minus two x minus three, right? Um, yeah, so actually that's probably not the way to do it because what's going to happen is you will, you're dividing by four, so you might be changing the solution. But let's just test it out and see if negative one is a solution. Um, we put, put negative one in, you get four plus eight minus 12, which is zero. You put in three, you get 36 minus 24 minus 12, which also equals zero. So B is correct. That's a quick way of checking your work, guys. If you're ever confused, you're like, mm, well, I did this trick. You know, I did this negative B or A sum of solutions trick, but I'm just not completely sold. So it's okay just to plug in your answer to the original, right? That's like the reverse way of solving a problem, using the answer choices to guide you, but sometimes it's good. What's the following example of a function whose graph in the xy plane has no x intercepts? It's a function whose graph x y plane has no x intercepts. All right, so no x intercepts means it never crosses zero, right? So like a, a horizontal line. A, quad, a quadratic function with real zeros. Okay, that's wrong. A quadratic function with no real zeros. That's potentially correct. A cubic polynomial with at least one zero zero. That's wrong too, because a zero is the same thing as the x intercept, right? If you have a zero, you have an x intercept. It's a synonym. So, a linear function whose rate of change is not zero. That's also wrong. So right here, four, a C. The reason being, this is how it looked like. No real solution means it never crossed the X axis. So like this or that, right? So C. The equation above, K is a constant. If X equals nine, what is the value of K? All right, you know, this is like a simple stuff right here. You just plug it in and, you know, solve. Equals nine, because you add nine to both sides. Then you square both sides, you get K plus two. Oh my God, what type of K is that? equals 81 oh my god I literally almost said 9 squared is 36 I feel like I haven't seen 36 and 9 so many times subtract 2 you get 79 pretty simple 
which the following is equivalent to the sum of expression a squared minus one a plus one remember guys different degrees so you cannot add them together so we have a squared plus a the negative one and plus one cancel so a jack he jackie and by the way guys don't get tripped up by stuff like this like you might think it's confusing because like a's in it or like variables it's not x don't get tripped up Jack has two summer jobs. She works as a two, which pays twelve per hour, and she works as a life guard, which pays nine fifty per hour. She works no more than twenty hours per week. So that that's a constraint. Less than equal twenty in terms of hours, right? So right here we see x plus y greater than equal twenty. Wrong. Greater than equal twenty. Wrong. Because no more than. So that's the max you can hit, right? So we're left with b and c. Um, we need to see if there's a cap on the two twenty. How this works? But she wants to earn at least two twenty per week. So she wants to make. At any amount greater than or equal to 220. So in that case, we should be C. Because this is less than or equal to, this is greater than or equal to. So C. In air, the speed of sound s in meters per second, linear function of air temperature t, and if degree Celsius, and given by s of t equals 0.6 plus 331.4. Which of the following statement is the best interpretation of number 331.4? In the context, this is the y intercept, guys. Um, Speed of sound in meters per second at zero degrees Celsius. That's potentially correct. Cause you plug in zero, this is the answer, right? It's not B. The increase in speed of sound in meters per second that corresponds to the increase in one uh, uh, one degree Celsius. This corresponds to the point six. That's this is slope. The increase in meters per second again is also a smaller slope. So y intercept. Y intercept means we you know when x equals zero, right? So when t equals zero in this case. Uh, x y solution of the system equations above. Uh, x greater than zero will survive x y. My bad, guys. Oof, long day. Um. Okay. And x greater than zero will survive x y. Huh. So the question is, you gotta find what does you know, what does x equal? What does x equal? Then once you find oh, x equal, you can find what y equals. So what we can do is let's distribute. So you have 2y plus 6. And guys, when you see this right here, you want to distribute automatically, okay? You want to think about dis distributing. Actually, huh, let me uh, hold that up real quick. If we get factored as left side out, we get 2y plus 3 equals 2x plus 3. That, I'm so sorry for that, <laughs> that spelling right there. Divide both sides by 2, you get y plus 3 is equal to x plus 3. Then subtract 3 from both sides, equal left for y equals x. So if y equals x, right, and y equals x squared, that must mean a is the answer, right? Because because x, if, let's say x is 1, right, they plug in 1 to here, you get y is 1 as well. And one times one is one. Let's see if both are actually one. So let's say if y and x are one. Plug in one here, you get two plus six is eight. Plug in one here, you get eight. So yeah. If a squared plus b squared equals c, a b equals y. What's the following? You're coming to four z plus eight y. So now you just you know plug it in. Pretty simple stuff. So you're left with four a squared plus four b squared equals eight a. Oh fuck! Ja, fudge, 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 fudge. Plus eight a b. Alright, so, okay, so first, this is a squared, so that's wrong. We need, we need, four, we need four a squared. So first will be, and by, when I say first, guys, I mean like first and foil, like first, outer, inner, last, right? So this is four a squared. So right here, okay, so this works so far. Four a times four a, so four a squared is equal to 16. A squared, so C is wrong, and so is D. All right, so left with B as the answer. Pretty straightforward. Eleven. Uh, let's see, let's continue the rest of this in the next video. So thank you all for watching. Let's go for part two, and let's score that perfect score in the math SAT section. Peace.